generation of engines. And uh, so we, we can just continue, no, <coughs> no chance to discuss uh, here. Uh, so I'm happy then to announce the next presentation. <coughs> and this is uh, uh, now uh, again in live and in presence. <laughs> that, that's great, absolutely great. Um, it's uh, still on, on uh, new weekends, but uh, we're, we're talking about uh, transmissions here, and I would like to um, uh, briefly introduce the, the presenter. The uh, presenter will be uh, Dr. Axel Baumann, um, and uh, just a, a few keywords from, from his bio. He, he earned his uh, doctorate degree in mechanical engineering at the U University of Stuttgart. Then he spent uh, uh, six years uh, as a project manager at uh, Mercedes AMG. By the way, we have seen one of those engines in the yeah. previous uh, presentation. I love uh, this engine. <laughs> <laughs> With uh, responsibilities uh, on, in projects and especially maybe you have to uh, explain a little bit uh, uh, on the uh, HP DCT transmission. Um, and since April this year, uh, Dr. Baumann is Senior Manager of Application Support uh, at ABL uh, Germany with the responsibilities of software engineering for test rigs, data management, uh, virtualization, uh, all those things related to it. So, uh, Dr. Baumann, we are looking forward to your presentation. Yeah, thank you, Professor Beil, for the invitation. It's a great honor to be here and speak to you at the automotive duplicate session. My speech is about synchronizers in automotive transmissions. Synchronizers are a small but crucial part within uh, automotive transmissions like manual transmissions, double clutch transmissions, and automated manual transmissions. Basically, synchronizers are also needed in electric drive units, which consist maybe of a two or three stage transmission. So this is um, a mandatory part within all um, automotive transmissions. I will shed light on two aspects of these synchronizers. First is vibrations, since NVH is an ongoing topic uh, with emission and fuel consumption reduction, because the ICE with higher pressures uh, it generates much more um, torsional vibrations, which are led into the powertrain. This is the root cause for vibrations of loose parts within transmissions. And the second aspect is the torque loss of these synchronizers. It's a small part, but it's uh, adding up quite quickly to a big um, torque loss when you gain into insight into a synchronizer. So from the outline, first uh, I want to show you some um, insights and basics about synchronizers in transmission. So what you can see here is a sketch of a five-speed manual uh, in the Europe country, manual transmissions are kind of bleeding down, but in the Asian market, for instance, and in low-cost countries, manual transmissions are still um, a big uh, portion of the overall market. So what you can see here, we have on the left side the ICE um, with the dual mass flywheel, which is um, the drive unit. It is connected to the um, clutch or the double clutch um, in the transmission. And we see these uh, red dotted or red line synchronizers, which are needed uh, to shift the loose gear to the transmission input shaft according to the um, selected gear. So what happens, um, as you can see, all these gear stages of the five speed are in constant mesh. And when we want to shift, uh, shift the gear from one to two, for instance, we have to release uh, one synchronizer from the first gear and engage another synchronizer in the second gear, which allows the power flow from um, the loose gear to the fixed gear of the transmission counter shaft. And in this case, on the right side, we have the transmission output, which goes to the wheel. So here is a um, typical single cone synchronizer, which are used in uh, automotive transmissions. It basically consists of um, three crucial parts. First is the synchronizer body, which is connected to the transmission shaft. So it rotates with the corresponding speed of the shaft. Um, on the other side, you can see the so-called gear shift sleeve. This is needed for um, shifting the gear actually to connect the, um, the synchronizer body with the 
idler gear which is located on the same shaft. The idler gear is basically um, located on the shaft via a roller bearing and can rotate uh, independent from the speed of the corresponding transmission. The crucial part of a synchronizer is this uh, friction cone. Uh, basically, it's called synchronizer and it has a um, friction surface containing, for instance, of uh, carbon fiber or any other high frictional material. Um, the basic principle uh, can be divided also into two cone synchronizers and then we have two friction surfaces or even three uh, friction surfaces are used in automotive transmissions depending on the load and speed what you uh, demand in your transmission. So here are some um, basic or influencing parameters which are um, need to be taken into account when we look on to vibrations and torque losses. First, uh, on the left side, we have certain geometric parameters which are mainly defined by the overall design of the synchronizer. Um, it is, for instance, a synchronizer, ring mass, the backlash, uh, that's, this is the um, play of the synchronizer ring within its uh, clearance. And we have the cone angle, which is basically the angle of this um, friction cone. Then we have, as just stated, the number of the friction surfaces and the size of the friction surface. Next uh, parameter is the clearance. So for proper function of the synchronizer, there is an actual play mandatory in between the idler gear and the synchronizer hub just to um, obtain a comfortable shift within the transmission. Then next is the synchronizer ring diameter, which is basically connected to the mass and the moment of inertia, which is uh, crucial for the dynamic behavior of the synchronizer itself. Um, looking on the operation parameters, on the right side, uh, first the ex excitation frequency is crucial for the vibration behavior, which is obvious. So the ICE um, basically contains of a dual mass flywheel, which reduces the um, torque fluctuation on the transmission input shaft, but still it's not zero. So there is a certain excitation from the transmission uh, input side and uh, other operational parameters are the acceleration amplitude, so which is the height of the um, ideal sinusoidal um, vibration and the relative speed, which is defined as the speed between the transmission shaft and the idle gear itself. It is obvious that when you rotate um, a certain mechanical part like the transmission input shaft, it generates um, a shear, shear stress in the lubricant which is located on the friction surface. So this causes actual, actually the torque loss of the synchronizer. Another kinetic parameters I'll define is the torque loss of the synchronizer, which is basically um, how much lubricant is located in between the friction surface. It is, as we just saw before in an engine oil, it's depending on the viscosity, but as our findings uh, will show you later on, it's also mainly depending on the chemical oil uh, composition, which is basically on a molecular um, level. Um, so it's the inner force of the lubricant itself. Some previous um, results uh, from our findings were these torque loss diagrams here. So we measured um, a friction and then in a synchronizer ring on a component test bench. Uh, we varied the relative speed between the idler gear and the um, synchronizer ring. So what, what we see on the y-axis is the generated torque loss for one synchronizer. We did this with several um, designs of synchronizers, but basically you can divide this curve into three phases. First is the, what we call phase one. So when we raise the speed, obviously the lubricant is sheared in between the gap and the torque loss is rising uh, at about a level of um, 0 0.5 newton meters of torque. This sounds very less, but if you just saw, if it adds up 
up to five or six years. This is many three newton meters of torque what we can save when we operate a synchronization in a in a defined manner. So the second phase, um, what happens now if we further raise the relative speed between the parts, this torque loss suddenly will come to a lower level around 0.15 newton meters. The reason for this is uh, due to the circumferential forces within the lubricant, the lubricant will get thrown out of the friction surface and so there is only an air or lubricant mixture in between the gap. So this lowers the torque loss of the synchronizer and if we further raise the relative speed um, there is almost a constant uh, torque loss visible for a certain synchronizer. So for examination of, um, of a typical passenger car synchronizer system we designed um, a single stage gearbox. Here you can see a schematic. So we have uh, the transmission input shaft which contains the synchronizer on the input side and the idler gear which can rotate relative about the input shaft and we have a transmission output shaft which contains a fixed gear. We applied this uh, single stage gearbox to a component test rig which basically consists of a drive motor which is connected to the transmission input shaft and um, the transmission output shaft is connected to the brake motor. Um, the shafts are connected via torsionally stiff coupling to um, allow the speed and the, um, the, the uh, vibrations to be forced into the transmission input shaft and the speed is controlled by incremental encoders to control the simulation of an internal combustion engine and the drive motor is able to simulate the behavior uh, of the speed of an internal combustion engine according to for instance for four cylinder engines to the second engine order and in our um, findings uh, we measure the we have a constant speed and we um, rise the angular acceleration of the transmission input shaft up to 2000 radians per second uh, which is quite high for an ICE um, with a uh, dual mass flywheel. So here you can see some um, findings uh, where you first all see that the lubricant has a decisive influence on the behavior. So first of all, on the x-axis you see the angular acceleration amplitude. So we have a constant speed and we are rising the torsional vibration of the transmission input shaft to a certain level, which is 2000 in our case, and we measure the sound pressure level of the vibrations uh, with a standard microphone like this one here in a certain defined distance to the transmission housing. We used a standard ear oil, which is was a mineral poly alpha olefin oil. It's just, it's a quite common ear oil in automotive manual transmissions. We made it, uh, as you saw, in a single stage gearbox. Um, you can adjust a certain oil level, so we adjusted the oil just as that the synchronizer is drained with oil. So to make sure that we operate the synchronizer in lubricated conditions. And what you can see here, when we um, rise the temperature from 30 to 80 degrees, and there is obviously dependency of the torque loss on the temperature which is clear because it's the viscous share in between the friction surface so at 30 degrees our um, synchronizer ring is starting to vibrate within its axial place and this is measurable here on the y-axis in a uh, sound pressure level uh, which is emitted by the test gearbox so depending depending on the oil viscosity um, the lowest temperature we have a um, high amount of torque loss so there is not much um, excitation on the synchronizer ring and if we higher the temperature the viscosity is getting lower and lower and that's why the synchronizer ring is uh, able to vibrate even at lower angular acceleration amplitudes due to a lower viscosity. On this slide, sorry you cannot see the full picture but basically the difference between here and there is in this case, we 
uh, drains the oil level down to the transmission shaft so that the synchronizer is not immersed in oil completely. So here you can see a clear independency of the oil temperature, which is basically obvious since there is no um, shear stress or no big shear stress within the friction cone. Now in this comparison, I want to show you two things. First of all, um, we analyzed a so-called low friction oil, which uh, consists of a poly alpha olefin glycol, or poly glycol, which is kind of oil for uh, usage in warm gears. Uh, it has a quite low inner friction due to its molecular or to its steric um, composition. Second aspect is, uh, I want to show you the differences, what happens when we vary the relative speed between the synchronizer and its uh, corresponding shaft. So when we hold the transmission input shaft, uh, the transmission output shaft still, we have a relative speed between the idle gear and the input shaft. So this generates a certain condition of shear stress within the friction cone. And this leads us to a certain um, way of slope for the sound pressure level. We vary these um, relative speeds in a certain range, which are typical for stop or idling or constant drive on a motor highway, for instance. So these are typical static operating conditions uh, for a synchronizer. And what you can see here, there is a strong dependency on the speed how fast we move the um, synchronizer ring uh, in contrast to the um, idler gear. On the right side, you can see a slight, slightly different behavior. Um, to sum up, it's strongly depending on the molecular structure of the oil, which is shared in the friction cone. So there's a, a clearly different uh, noise emission visible in these measurements. So you, what you can see here, it's about one or two decibel lower than here with the standard transmission oil. Another variation I want to show you is the axial play. Here is a cutoff uh, view of the synchronizer itself. So what we have here is the transmission input shaft. Here is the idler gear, which is um, located on a needle roller bearing. We can adjust this actual play of the idler gear via this um, sleeve. And uh, here is the synchronizer mechanism, which contains, contains here the synchronizer ring and the gear shift sleeve. So if we vary this actual play of this um, sleeve, we generate a certain um, play here within this friction cone, which is strongly defining the fork loss of the transmission. And this is what you can see here in this graph, basically, we vary the actual play in between 0.1 and 0.4 millimeters, and you can see different behaviors. So if the actual play is quite small, there's a high, higher torque loss than in the situation with 0.4 millimeters, which results in a further um, rise of the sound pressure level, which is available here on this diagram. So to sum up, um, I showed you that a synchronizer mechanism is a crucial part within an automotive transmission and clearly contributes to the overall efficiency of the powertrain. The um, torque loss can be influenced, first of all, by geometric parameters, but basically it can be influenced by the chemical composition of the base oil used. For instance, we used a high molecular um, steric um, oil to lower the inner friction of this lubricant. And this is the way how you can influence the overall vibration behavior and the overall dynamic behavior of the system itself. So I thank you for your uh, kind attention and give the word back to Professor Beidel.